Hello and welcome once again to Prices at the Pumps, our weekly look at trends in the energy markets. I'm Scott Squires, pleased to be joined as always each Wednesday by energy expert Dan McTagg. And Dan, uh, I, I kind of like say the same thing week after week, but it's true. We got lots to talk about, but let's begin at the beginning. Um, as we record this uh, on a Wednesday midweek, where are you seeing prices headed? What's the trend that you're seeing at the pumps, uh, home heating fuel, et cetera, in this region? Well, the rest of North America sees an average increase of about five cents a liter. Uh, so whether regulated authorities want to reflect and respect market fundamentals, I'll leave that for the politicians and the pundits. But uh, if I'm looking at Newfoundland tomorrow, uh, a five cent a liter increase for gasoline, anywhere between 1.5 and two cent increase for diesel. Although I believe that uh, we might start to see home heating fuel dip a little bit. Uh, so that looks like uh, it might be that we're, we've bottomed out. You and I talked about this last week. It wouldn't be good this week and certainly uh, right to the mark. Uh, we also see inventories for crude finally re reflecting reality. That is a 7.5 million barrel draw. Uh, and same thing for gasoline and uh, not so much for diesel. Uh, and we, one would expect that because we're now getting to slightly warmer weather. Uh, diesel use uh, does fall a little bit, but not gasoline. It's surging ahead. And it means that we're going to be continuing to see over the next several weeks uh, likelihood of uh, increases, not just because, of course, uh, markets are not focused on uh, bank failures uh, or the U.S. Fed and interest rates. They're now more laser focused on what they should be doing and that's uh, look very carefully at the, at the fundamentals supply and demand if they do that and they continue doing that i believe they will be doing that uh there is nowhere for prices to go but up over the next several weeks dan you and i have talked several times about the science that you use and the numbers that you use behind your predictions and and where you say that you think prices are headed. It's not always an exact science and, and there's a lot of things that can come into play, but you're usually pretty accurate. Last week in this region and for Nova Scotia in particular, you said that, you know, you really thought that it should go down with the Friday price set around four to five cents a liter. That didn't happen. It went up around a penny. Your thoughts on why? Well, I think the NSUA or B and others have some explaining to do. Uh, because if they've shifted from winter to summer gasoline, they did so prematurely. Uh, winter to summer gasoline has a difference of about six cents a liter. I predicted a four cent drop. We got a one to two cent increase. That's the six cent difference. But they should be explaining to people that right now in the Maritimes, you're being forced to pay for a much higher spot market long before it's required, long before it shows up anywhere in Canada. Uh, and so for that reason, one would think that uh, perhaps a little bit more transparency and openness uh, rather than the opaque sort of, uh, you know, take it as you will uh, that we see from regulators. But I want to be really clear on this. Everywhere in North America saw prices decrease last week. No one increased except regulated markets. So you have to start to really wonder whether it's in your financial interest to continue to allow uh, bureaucrats to second guess what the market is already doing and in the process, leaving you shorthanded. Um, the numbers, as I pointed out last week, uh, were pretty clear. Uh, and I did show this last week. Here was the numbers for March 16th. Those that's gas, diesel, and heating. So gas from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, divided by seven. So there's where the, 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 the numbers came to was 90.8. They dropped to 86.9, less tax, came to 4.5 cents. But we saw a rally of about a penny or two on the Thursday. So that I, that's why I deducted the half. Those are the numbers. That's the numbers that the, uh, that the regulators have to look at. They come from Opus and they come from Platts. So they have another set of numbers. I think it's incumbent upon them to disclose those numbers and stop trying to hide information. After all, you pay for those bureaucrats and those civil servants. Uh, and if they're gonna make a decision on the fly to suddenly import and use uh, summer blends boutique gasoline, uh, then they need to explain that to people why they're doing it a month before the federal mandate, the federal requirement kicks in. That aside, my numbers will still be accurate no matter what uh, in the real world. In the synthetic world of uh, bureaucratic regulated prices, I suppose it's rule of thumb for a lot of civil servants. Dan, in the last week, um, what have been some things that have caught your attention either domestically or on world markets that you think might have an immediate effect and maybe even a long-term effect on what we're going to see here for prices for energy and fuel? 
Yeah, we're going to continue to see upward pressure on prices, as I said at the opening, Scott. Uh, we are going to continue to see uh, an improving market with oil likely moving as WTI from 67 last week, 74 this week, possibly to 78, 79 next week. And more importantly, with the spot price for gasoline moving right now, of course, if I'm looking at the markets, they're up about uh, two or three cents uh, a gallon. Uh, but right now, the spot market for what we have today, uh, as an example, uh, I'm looking at uh, 247.71 a gallon, which was yesterday. That works out to about 89.2 cents a litre. Uh, I would expect that that's going to increase about 10 cents a litre, especially on April 15th when we do make that shift uh, from winter to summer gasoline, because those numbers are about 30 cents higher on uh, the spot market. So that's right across the uh, U.S. So they do have an in impact on us. If the regulated authorities uh, in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia have already jumped the gun, then of course it means that uh, the increase will be lessened. But I, right across Canada, we're looking at a 10 cent net increase. And of course, this Saturday for New Brunswick, uh, Ontario, uh, and most of the Western provinces, including British Columbia, we're looking at a net increase of about uh, five, four cents a litre with the carbon tax being increased on April Fool's Day. So no matter how you slice it, Things are going to get a lot more expensive. I think Nova Scotia goes a little later in the year, probably May to July. But uh, one way or another, um, you know, get, we're going to be getting back to prices out in the 170, 180 range in Nova Scotia, uh, and very similar to that price in uh, New Brunswick, PEI, and of course, uh, a little higher in Newfoundland. Something else, Dan, that could be a complete show unto itself is talking about the recently uh, released federal budget. Uh, we don't want to get too far into the weeds on that. But as someone who spent 18 years as a member of parliament, you certainly know the inner workings of government. Uh, what are a couple of things that really caught your attention from this latest federal budget that you think could have a real immediate impact on Canadians and consumers? I think the debt numbers are astronomical. Uh, if we're looking at $1.2 trillion in debt and to service that $40 billion this year, $44 billion next year, might as well be 50 or $60 billion. What concerns uh, folks like me who've been around this before uh, is that it's going to take a long time for the government to pay some of that down. And in order to get the country right, uh, throwing away an industry that is one of your main driver of revenue to pay that down, the oil and gas sector, by saying you're going to you know, subsidize clean energy, whatever that should mean, using borrowed money. Uh, is, I think, a very uh, a very dubious way of uh, conducting public policy. But more importantly, countries that have done this in Europe have proven that that's not correct. I think, as Jean Chrétien would have said many times to his caucus in mine at the time, uh, is that we need to look before we leap. Germany is now moving back to coal. Italy doesn't want to shut down uh, you know, internal combustion engines. Europe is going to walk away from that. I think Canada has an opportunity to as it were, turn the ship a little bit. And uh, if the United States is going to go to the IRA, to the uh, to the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, and that's what we're trying to emulate, I suggest that uh, we wait for Americans uh, and their financiers to realize that uh, you know half a trillion dollar in debt is something that can't be financed uh, anytime soon. So in for Canada, I think we take that approach. We stay steady with what's happening to our neighbors to the south, but we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You're going to need oil and gas for a long time to come to finance this, as well as to ensure your economy continues to tick. And are there a couple of other things on the world stage, whether it's geopolitically or things that you're seeing with the big players in the oil market, you know, like Saudi Arabia, like Venezuela? Are there anything that you're seeing there that you think are could be signaling some trends? Oh, there's a realignment, obviously, of the energy, uh, uh, and with it, uh, the the global uh, order, uh, not just around oil, but around currency. Uh, Saudi Arabia is going to be building out uh, refineries for China. India is buying its oil from Russia. Russia has uh, gladly dropped the amount of oil it's producing, and all of that is going to non-European nations. Uh, so there is a realignment of the market. Uh, and it will mean the primacy of Europe and the United States, I think, is uh, beginning to dwindle its influence. Uh, and so as we are looking for ways to get away from uh, hydrocarbons, they're actually doubling down and uh, watching their economies thrive and prosper, while ours are beginning this process of stalling and going into very, very deep debt. It's a very troubling sign, but it's one that I think more and more of us should be aware of that uh, uh, things have changed dramatically. And a lot of it is because I think we've uh, we've acted too rashly in terms of getting rid of our oil and gas sector from a country that has the third largest provable reserves. 
Dan, uh, it's great to have you here each week to wade through some of these things uh, and to talk about the details of subjects that perhaps the average person like myself you know, may not be able to fully wrap their head around. So we appreciate your insights, your expertise, being able to talk about these things. I think it's important to do so. But of course, when you're not here with us, you, you can't be with us all the time. Although, you know, we'd like that if you could. <laughs> but <laughs> where can folks find you when you're not with us here on the Saltwire Network? Yeah, look, uh, affordableenergy.ca is where I put up a lot of blogs and information on what's on my mind, uh, where I try to spend a bit of time parsing out what you and I just discussed. And Gas Wizard, Gas Price Wizard on Twitter is probably the other way. Now, of course, uh, Twitter's a fun part. You can let your hair down. I often do. But that's also where you get some predictions. So uh, for what it's worth, uh, that's where we are on Twitter. And of course, we have a gas site, gaswizard.ca. And I'd let you know day to day what uh, prices can be a day or two ahead. Well, Dan, we appreciate your time as always and uh, enjoy the rest of your day and beware this Saturday for the April Fools that might be out there trying to pull a fast one on you. Yeah, <laughs> get ready for it. Cross your fingers and uh, don't be fooled. Gas up before tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks very much, Dan. We'll look forward to, take, uh, to talking with you again next week. Take care, Scott. Thanks. You as well. Bye-bye.